Hey, it's Mark coming to you from Baker's Green Acres. Today's the 20th of January. Um, as you can see, the weather has really broken here. We've got a lot of slush, a lot of, a lot of ice. Um, and as, as things progress in the Mangalitsa world, there's, I'm getting a lot of questions that I actually have to go and research uh, because it's things that I never really thought about and, and haven't figured out how to put into words. But one of the questions that we're getting is along the lines of are the blonde Mangalitsa and the Swallowbelly Mangalitsa, are they different breeds? Are they different breeds? And I'm gonna sh first I'm going to show you what a Swallowbelly is. There's my boar over there, Larry. He's about three years old. Boar meaning that he has not been castrated and he's a breeding animal. So we use him, you know, for our sows, our group of sows. Um, he is a swallow belly. You see the coloring on him? He's got a blonde belly and you know everything else on him is black. He's got a certain facial characteristic. He's a fine example of a mangalitsa, a swallow belly mangalitsa, I think. And then we have blondes too. And I have a lot of them. And I got one in here right now. She's inside. And you see that coloring. All right. She's going to be a mom here pretty quick. And she's got a little baby with, that's not her baby, but that's also a swallow belly. That's the uh, juvenile. Um, coloring of a swallow belly you know they they do get darker and then it'll be the black will be all black and with the swallow belly so and then there's uh there's two other kinds there's a red i don't have any of them and there's a black and we do have some that are all black um and i'm going to see how that turns out i'm going to keep a couple of those sows thing is, is I don't have anybody to breed them back to, to keep the black going. But now, are they different breeds? I'm going to say no, because when we breed them together, all right, Larry was bred with uh, that blonde, you get one of these. And we call them brindles, brindles. All right, so they're kind of brownish. Um, but the reason why we kept that going, and here, here's another picture of her, was because what we've noticed is the brindles create a, they're a very good mom, they have good sized litters, and they're very durable. Uh, they get along with the other animals. They don't fight with them. Sometimes the blondes have attitudes. Believe that. Um, and if we wanted to stay with an all blonde, we could have bred for that. But with the blondes, we found that they have some characteristics that in the business that we're in, meat production, they did not work out for us. They are not good moms. And I'm not saying all of them aren't, but if you have a, ba a bad mom, and that would mean, you know, somebody that has babies and walks away from them, has babies but won't feed them, has health issues, um, it's usually a blonde, i.e. Uh, snowball. Um, so to combat that, to, to fix that problem, they're and, and this is just my herd. This isn't everybody's herd. You know, this isn't just blondes in general. This is just the way it's worked here. Um, when we breed a blonde with a swallow belly, it has a tendency to soften uh, their iniquities and get them running a little bit better. Um, if I had no blondes here, I wouldn't mind. If I was all just brindles and swallows, I would be fine with that. Now, let me tell you this, when you butcher these animals, which we do routinely, um, 
you can put carcass next to carcass and you cannot tell the difference. And then, you know, I'm not talking about taking animals to butcher and then getting the meat back. I'm talking, we butcher them here in our butcher shop. So we get to lay them on the table side by side. We get to sample the meat and sample the fat. And I'm here to tell you, there is no difference between the two as far as quality. They are both good quality. Um, one of the things about the blonde that's better is their rate of gain. They live for food and they grow very fast. Um, but I have had swallow bellies that have done the same thing. But I'm just saying overall, that's what I've noticed with the blondes. Um, but those are the breeds that we have here. And our program is different than some of the people that are breeding for breeding stock. Um, they're breeding for animals that other people are going to buy, pay, pay big bucks for, and then rebreed those animals, thinking that they're going to get, you know, the, the cream of the crop. Uh, does it work that way? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Because I'm not in that business. My business is meat production, so our best animal is the one that we're going to keep for what we do. All right? Now, what we do is we raise animals up, we process them for, for meat. And um, we think that the, the brindle is probably the best animal for that. Now, the jury's still out because I haven't taken brindles and bred them to brindles because I don't have, uh, I don't have a line to do that. There is nobody else that's got brindles in the United States as far as I know. So we always have to breed them back to either a blonde or a swallow. And we did it with a blonde for a long time. And now <clears throat> our, all of our animal, all of our breeding animals, our boars are all swallows. So, you know, can I do a controlled experiment and get totally accurate uh, information? I guess I really can't at this point. I'm just passing on what I know right now. And that's what I know. Hey, it's Mark from Baker's Green Acres. Anyone can farm.